Hey. I know it's late, but get in here. We've got stuff to talk about. Apparently there's this big story about a memo. A memo, they say. Um, wow, there are a lot of people up late. So, here's the deal. Normally I wouldn't be on this late at night. <laughs> Christina's in the other room. Um, but there's a story that's uh, trending on Fox News and Twitter, at least in conservative circles, that there's some confidential intelligence briefing memo that is going to rip the lid off the uh, the deep state and show that there was surveillance that was unauthorized and all kinds of shenanigans that we're going to find out. And it's going to be bigger than Watergate, say the people who have seen it. <clears throat> so I know you want my take on this. Well, maybe you don't, but you're going to get it anyway. Yeah, we're talking about release the memo. So here's what we know, and then I'll give you the persuasion filter on this. So what we know is that there is some kind of a memo that talks about things done with maybe FISA warrants and surveillance, and we don't know exactly what. But the people who have seen it, who can't describe the details of it because of confidentiality, say, my God, it's, it's bigger than Watergate, it's going to... It's going to change the world. People are going to lose their jobs, maybe go to jail, whatever. Um, so I see this story all over the Internet. I look. I go to foxnews.com. It's all over foxnews.com. And then I go over to CNN, their website. Nothing. Now, why would there be nothing at CNN... But it's all over um, Fox News and conservative types of sites and conservative people on Twitter. And it's a really big deal. Uh, Hannity talked about it, apparently, on Fox News. So what would explain the CNN ha doesn't even treat it like it exists? <laughs> now, it could be just the usual, right? It could be that um, they're just... You know, playing for their team, and this isn't good for their team, so they're ignoring it until they, they have to stop ignoring it. Um, but what have I told you about this multiple movies on one screen situation? How much credibility should you put in people telling you they've seen a secret memo and their interpretation of it is that it's worse than Watergate and it's a big deal? Give me your opinion. How credible is it? People who don't tell you the details, they give you their interpretation of what it's all going to mean. Uh, <laughs> all right, so here's my here's my hot take. I'm not going to put this in the form of, of a prediction because this is more of a more of a statistical thing, meaning that you know there, there's one outcome that's far more likely than the other. I'm going to disappoint you. By far the most likely outcome, not guaranteed, so I'm not going to put this up on my my prediction record, but uh, the far by far the most likely outcome is that should we ever see this memo, and it seems likely that we would, that it's not quite what it has been made out to be. <laughs> far and away, that's more likely then the politicians looking at it are characterizing it accurately uh, and that there's no ambiguity. My prediction is, well, I guess I'll make, it a, I'll make it a prediction. My prediction is that there will be far more ambiguity than the people who have seen it are letting on. Um, and that they, they have now primed the pump so that when you see it, if, if you're inclined to believe the Republican side of things, you're going to see it. In other words, when you see the memo, you will see it the way they've primed you to see it. 
So your confirmation bias will kick in, and you're going to see something that's as big as Watergate, because you've been primed to see that now. <clears throat> what will the Democrats and the anti-Trumpers see when they look at exactly the same memo? They're not going to see what you see. So if you think that this is the sort of story that's um, there's going to be a breakthrough that's so clear that even the people who didn't want to believe it just have to throw up their hands and say, all right, we're CNN, but we even we believe this. This is a big deal. It's like Watergate, etc. It's possible. It's possible that this is a big deal and that everybody on both sides will say, oh my God, this is so big that we can't be partisan. You know, this is about a, you know, a threat to the government or something. It's possible that'll happen. And that's sort of what the various um, politicians who have seen the memo are suggesting will be the reaction. I'm suggesting that that's probably pretty unlikely and that the far more likely outcome will be that everybody will look at these memos and come to different conclusions from the same written word. Because we always do. Why aren't Dems wanting it released? Yeah, that's a good question. So apparently there was a vote and along party lines, Democrats said don't release it and Republicans said yes. So um, the most obvious or at least um, popular interpretation of that is that they have something to hide. So they have something to hide and that's why they voted against it. Is that the only reason you can think of that they would vote against it? So this is a quiz, right? Based on what you know about the world, what you might know about persuasion if I've taught you anything and how people reason, what's another reason that the Democrats would not want it out, which is different from they want to hide the truth. Well, <laughs> what, what would be another reason? Yeah, it, and it's interesting because most of you won't be able to come up with another reason. But let me give you another reason that's far more likely then it has truth in it that they want to prevent. The far more likely reason is that it's ambiguous and that people could interpret it in a way that's bad for them, which is very different from it says something that's true and everybody will agree it's true and the Democrats don't want that out. Far more likely that it's just something that can be interpreted in a way that... Uh, that is bad for them. So that alone would be reason to vote against it on party lines. So, <laughs> uh, so again, here's your two possibilities. One is that there really is gigantic news that's going to happen, and I'm going to employ the the Scott Alexander rule. All right, Scott Alexander is a, a pseudonym, pseudonym, pseudonym for a writer who blogs um, in a website called, uh, somebody will remind me here. I know some of you read his site. Um, but he once wrote this fascinating long blog. The, the, uh, the gist of it is that if something seems, seems amazing in the news, like something amazingly unlikely, even though there seems to be evidence and even though everybody who's reporting it and all the experts are telling you it's true, just the fact that it seems so darn unlikely is almost always predictive that it's not true. Because unlikely things like this just don't happen very often. I mean, they rarely happen. But what does happen all the time and how many times have we seen it in two years? What happens all the time is a story will come out and you'll say, my God, that's amazing. How could that happen? How could X have done this? You know, how, how could we live in such a world where these things would happen? And then a month later, you learn that it didn't happen. It was all fake news. Um, 
put a number on it uh, in percentages. <clears throat> so let me finish this thought. So the setup that we're given is that there could be something in the memo that if it's the way the politicians who have seen it and are willing to talk about it, if they have correctly characterized it, it would be one of the biggest stories in the history of the republic. It would be bigger than Watergate. Now, how often does something like that happen? Pretty rare. But how often do we think something like that is going to happen and then it's just fake news? All the time. <laughs> it happens all the time. So far more likely, yes, yeah, Slate Star Codex is the name of the um, blog that Scott Alexander does, and he's the one who who talks about this phenomenon where if something looks like it's too too incredible to be true, it's because it almost always is not true. And this falls exactly into that model, right? It it, it really couldn't be more um, more perfect. Uh, it, it falls right into the if it looks like it is too incredible to be true, it's probably not true. So look for some ambiguity in that, um, but you should expect that everybody who is on whatever team you are is going to agree with you when they look at it. At the same time, everybody on the other team, whatever team that is, is going to think it doesn't say anything or it says, says a lot, um, but we're going to be looking at it and coming to different conclusions. That much I'm reasonably sure about. Yeah, so those of you who think it's the tip of the iceberg, it might be. It's not impossible, but probably not. Um, how often does a Donald Trump happen? Well, keep in mind that I predicted Donald Trump. So I know the difference between um, something that actually is very likely to happen but only some people can tell because they have, you know, either special background or skills to identify it versus something that everybody's looking at the same way. Nobody's an expert, and we're just saying, well, that would be really incredible. Scott, love you, but you're uninformed. Well, we're all uninformed because we don't know what's in that memo. Isn't that really the, the context here? And by the way, I could be wrong. Tomorrow or whenever we learn, not probably not tomorrow, but whenever we learn what's in that memo, I could be wrong. Could, could be it really is the biggest story ever. But the odds are low. Just so you know the odds. Um... I'm taking the fun out of it. I know, I'm kind of a buzzkill tonight, right? But wouldn't you rather uh, wouldn't you rather have a reasonable expectation for tomorrow? Yeah, maybe you get surprised on the upside. You never know. Intel research? No, I haven't been well, I've been I've been following the stories the way the public has been following them. <clears throat> <laughs> so the reason that uh I'm using my 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 phone as my uh my light for this is that I'm in a room hotel room that I've been here for days and I can't figure out how to turn on the lights in this room. I've tried everything. There doesn't seem to be any mechanism for turning on lights. There are lights, but there are no buttons, knobs, anything like that. So the <clears throat> All right, I'm just looking at your comments. Buzz Killington. Yes, I'm sorry I buzz killed you today. Um if you want to be optimist, you know, maybe this memo has something in it. But if it's like if it's like other things that feel like this, you might be underwhelmed when you see what's in it. All right, that's all for now. To now. I got other stuff to do. Uh, thanks for staying up late and 